What is good, everybody? Today, we are reviewing the Walmart exclusive WWE Elite Monday Night War Series 1 set. Now, this set does feature Hollywood Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, Undertaker, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And in this set, if you collect the entire wave, you can build the WWE Elite Lex Luger Build-A-Figure. Now, I'm intrigued with this set, and it's kind of crazy because coming up in just a couple short weeks, we're going to be going to WrestleMania 40, where they're going to have new figure reveals. And I remember last year at WrestleMania 39, we were there when they revealed this set, and it was very early prototypes, and they announced the Monday Night War set. So, so it did take a full year to actually get these in our hands officially, but I am very glad to finally have them. We have two representing WCW, two representing WWF or WWE, and we have the full wave here. I found them on my toy hunt. If you guys missed that toy hunt, definitely go check that out. Very fun experience, very loaded Walmart on that toy hunt, the most loaded Walmart I think I've ever seen. So go check that out. I'd greatly appreciate it. But like I said, these are Walmart exclusive. You can find them on the shipper. You can find them on different things there. But today, man, we're going to dive into the entire wave, take a look at everything. But let's shut the hell up and dive into it. Now, I did want to take a look at every single individual package so you guys could see what you're working with here. So you have their names on the side, the Build-A-Figure Lex Luger that we were talking about, Monday Night War logo, Lex Luger Build-A-Figure, name up the side, front viewing window here, you have a shot of the talent. Other side, you have a shot of the talent here, WCW, all the good stuff. And on the back, we do have a shot of Hulk Hogan, all the bio reads, all that good stuff, the rest of the figures, and of course, the Lex Luger. But there's our Hogan. Here's a shot of Scott Hall in the packaging, looking very fire, if I do say so myself. Shot on the side. All the things the same, except the name and obviously the images, but there's a shot of Scott Hall in his denim. We also have a shot of Undertaker here. Very nice stuff going on there. Don't know how I feel about all these figures, man. It's going to be a very interesting review because I have no I have no expectations coming in. I know, you know, my first thoughts on these figures, but we're going to, of course, review this entire wave, take a closer look at every figure, all the accessories they come with, take a closer look at the Build-A-Figure Lex Luger. Then we're going to rank this set from worst to best in my own personal opinion, but there's a shot of Austin, probably the figure I'm most excited for, man, but that is the entire Monday Night War set, man. With all that being said, let's go ahead and crack these guys out of the packaging, find out what they're all about, take a look at their accessories, and rank this WWE Elite Series, Monday Night War Series number one. So here's our Monday Night War Series number one Walmart exclusive wave, man. From left to right, Hollywood Hogan, Scott Hall, Undertaker, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. I gotta be real, I got a lot, of, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I, I do not know. And you're probably like, what the hell are you even talking about? Well, we're gonna unfold it. We're gonna unfold everything in here, man. And I'm just gonna give my entire thoughts on everything here. But at first glance, I'm not too thrilled. I'm not too thrilled. But we're gonna get into all those different things, man. Break down all the lore, of course. Get into everything, man. We're just gonna work left to right. I'm gonna start with Hollywood Hogan, go through the accessories, go through the figure, go through the comparisons, and we're just going to work left to right until we get the Lex Luger, build the figure, and then rank the set. So buckle the hell up, man. Let's dive into Monday Night War Series number one and find out if it's worth a damn. Is it crap or is it somewhere in between? Let's find out. All right, man, so getting into Hollywood Hogan's accessories, you get quite a bit here. And really, everybody in the set kind of gets a decent amount of accessories, except for one guy, which we'll get into. But starting up first, we do have our Hulkster weight belt here. Now, of course, we do have a brand new weight belt finally coming to us in the Ultimate Edition Series 21 Cody Rhodes figure. But this whole Hogan weight belt, I mean, yeah, the design's cool, but of course, it doesn't have the belt loop on there and the buckle, and it's just, it just lacks a lot, man. It's not accurate, and it's actually awful. I, I don't, I do not like this because it's so inaccurate, so, I mean, you do get it, but hopefully, you know, they're going to have to redo. Hopefully, once we get that new weight belt mold, it's going to improve everything, but, it, you know, it is the Hulkster weight belt. You know, you, at least it comes with something, I guess, so you do have that, and we do have his black bandana right here, which looks really good, and it actually fits the figure pretty decent here. Nice looking Hogan head sculpt right here but you can throw that on there and it doesn't hug i really wish it kind of like hugged it a little bit more but oh, okay it does i guess it does hug it just doesn't feel like it hugs but i guess it does that's pretty good right there yeah i like that i think that's pretty money yeah that's damn good right there i think that's as good as you can say now one thing you want when you put this on is you don't want to have that like super thickness where it just looks like a real big helmet or something and i think that's pretty seamless they did a good job here on this whole this hulk hogan bandana now to pair with your hulk hogan bandana you do get the solid black sunglasses right here and if we take the Hogan head sculpt and slide this on right here you know they they fit okay now the main thing is you know they don't like plug in anything but they don't fall off right off the figure now they're not perfect by any stretch but I don't hate it I think it does look good on here and the head sculpt looks really good with the glasses on there but it is a bit tricky to get the bandana on with this now it does come with one of those mini rubber bands and low-key I think I just recommend keeping the rubber band I don't have it right here beside me but it'll hold those glasses in place so then when you slide the bandana on there it'll fit 
fit better. But you can get it. If you, you know, if you finagle it enough, you can get it there. God in heaven. There you go. Yeah, it's not bad right there. Not bad at all. Outside of that, he does come with his black cross necklace here with the silver pendant. Looking pretty good. I do believe this is just a repaint of the necklace mold that we saw in his Ultimate Edition. I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure it's the same exact mold. But it looks really good, so that, that works for me. I don't have any issues there. But you know, it's really hard to sculpt those beads really, really small like that. So this is pretty good. And then he also comes with a solid black sleeveless shirt that does have Velcro on the back, so they do have the Velcro on there. But it's just a solid black t-shirt. It's not anything crazy, or I guess not t-shirt, but muscle tee, I guess you could say, or a tank top style shirt. And it looks pretty good. I like this. Don't have any issues with it. It's just plain black. Nothing to write home about. And then last but not least, we do have his interchangeable hands. He has the same gloved hands that he came with on his Ultimate Edition Series 7 figure in the, you know, baggy sort of black solid gloves. And then he also has the same glove mold here, but they're in fist form instead of mic holding or weapon wielding. Armin, right, getting into Hulk Hogan, start up the head sculpt. I really like this head sculpt. I do believe this is a brand new sculpt that we're seeing here. I really enjoy it. I think it looks really damn good. I don't think this is a part of the three pack with Hogan. I don't think so. I could be wrong about that, but I do believe this is brand new or it's just a reuse of one of those head sculpts from that three pack. Got that angry, pissed off old man Hogan right there, man. But that just, I don't know. It looks like he's coming after you though, man. Look at that right there. Got the little piece of hair. I will say the head sculpt's a bit loose on here. Like it pops on fine, but it, I mean, it's a bit, it's a little bit loose. It's not egregious, but it's definitely there. But going down, we do have that new torso that we did see on the three pack, which I really like. It was debut. It was, you know, quote unquote debuted on this figure when we first saw it at WrestleMania 39 at the Superstore last year, but they did bring it here. You got the belly button in there. Very good for old man Hogan. I like the big arms and everything. I like this. I like this torso a hell of a lot. I think it looks really good. There's the cross necklace still on there, but there's the gloves. And then he has this charcoal gray pants here. Now this crotch piece and legs are from his old Hall of Fame figure and his old Legends Target exclusive Elite that we got not too long ago. And the legs are a bit skinny compared to the torso and arms, but God, I may have to move these faces back here, man. What is this? All right, hopefully that gives us a better look here. It's like it kept trying to pick up the faces right there, but yeah, the legs are charcoal gray or like a very dark gray. And then he does have his cowboy boots in here in black, which look really good as well. I like this figure, man, but let's look at the proportions and get it to some comparisons. So standing back, it really doesn't look that bad as I was thinking. It actually looks quite good, I would say. I don't really have a problem with those proportions, but his torso is pretty big. Like, I guess at certain angles, you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, it looks pretty good, man. Especially, you know, when you have him all dressed up in his gear. But, you know, I did want to undress... Because you got to look at the figure without the all the dressings on there. But he, I do want to dress him back up before we get into some comparisons. But you guys can see the differences here between, you know, this Hogan with the clothes on versus the clothes off. But... I know that edit turned out terrible, but I wanted to try my hand at it anyway. But yeah, he looks pretty damn good all dressed up right here, man. I like it. He kind of, I don't know, like looking at the head sculpt, that mustache, it's giving me like Dale Earnhardt vibes. So now, from now on for me, this is Dale Earnhardt Hulk Hogan. How about that? Shout out to the legend. But for your Hollywood Hulk Hogan comparisons, we do have the new Monday Night Wars in the middle. We have the Target exclusive three-pack Hollywood Hogan on the left. And then we have the Ultimate Edition Series 7 Ultimate Edition Hollywood Hulk Hogan on the right. And they all have their own fair share. I mean, they have three different skin tones. We did just get this re-released in the updated skin tone. But I think I would have preferred this skin tone on this guy. But it does, it's not the biggest deal ever. But yeah, this skin tone would have looked better over here, I do believe. But uh, it's still cool to see these up next to each other and whatnot. And we do have that, you know, the WWE version of Hollywood Hogan. And I did make mine into an Ultimate Edition, so if you guys wanted that in there, you could take a look at that. But, I don't know, I enjoy the Hogan figures a lot, so having another comparison here to have this one. May need to fix it up a little bit, but I still like it a lot. Alright man, so getting into Scott Hall's accessories, and also, we will be taking a look at the Build-A-Figure pieces that they come with when we build the actual Lex Luger figure, so don't worry about that. If you guys are wondering about that, that'll come with the Lex Luger portion. We'll get into what they come with, but Scott Hall does come with his entrance vest here, but it is just, you know, a denim vest. It's a, it's a denim jacket that he cut the sleeves off of, and... It's very flat, especially when you see it on the figure compared to the dry brush detail that's on the pants of the Scott Hall. This is very flat, man, and I'm definitely going to try to touch this up on surgery. We're going to dry brush some details in here so that we can at least make out some details, and it, I think it's going to bring the figure to life. So the next episode of Action Figure Surgery, hopefully we'll be able to get in here and do all those different things, man. But yeah, this is very flat. The sculpt's fine and all those things, but it's just so flat and very plain Jane. So we're definitely going to touch that up. I really wish they would have put the dry brushing on there, but and also the, the color, I guess the color matches with the pants, but we'll get into that later, I guess. But yeah, I definitely wish it had some dry brush detail on the vest. Now, it also comes with two interchangeable heads. Now, I do believe this is the Ultimate Edition Razor Ramon head sculpt, if I'm not mistaken, but I wish that the uh, the 5 o'clock shadow was a little bit darker. This one's not as bad. This one's better. It's really on this head sculpt. You see how light it is in comparison. This has the perfect 5 o'clock shadow. I feel like this one doesn't, but uh, I don't know. I don't like this head sculpt in comparison. The sculpt's fine. I think it's the face. The face just looks very throwback Mattel. Like, 2000 
2015-ish looking Mattel or earlier, to be honest with you. But they're not horrific head sculpts or anything. I, I just, they're not my favorite, I guess you could say. But I definitely like this one better than this one. But you guys can let me know. I know that I'm pretty sure the man bun's more accurate. But you do get the hair up, hair down. They just, you know, they, they don't necessarily match because of the 5 o'clock shadow. So, I don't know. I don't know. You guys can sound off in the comment section below. What do you think? Also, like a toothpick head sculpt would be cool. But we have so many Razor Ramon and Scott Hall head sculpts. You could probably just find your favorite and put it on there. And then we also have a microphone. Now, it's not a WCW microphone, but a, a black microphone that has the WWE logo imprinted on there. So that's, you know, that is kind of unfortunate that the, uh, you know, they didn't put, you know, the WCW logo there on there, the accurate microphone. But it's not too, it's not the biggest deal of all time, but it's certainly worth mentioning as I lose it. But outside of that, he also comes with mic holding or weapon wielding style hands. And he also comes with fist. Uh, you know, you know what? Beat the hell out of somebody. All right, man, for Scott Hall, starting out the head sculpt, I really don't care for this head sculpt. And I know that when he did do his debut. His 5 o'clock shadow wasn't super dark or anything, and I just don't really care for this head sculpt. I feel like the lightness is lacking in some way. It just looks a bit cartoony to me, but it's not horrific, I don't think, you know? At least it has the, you know, this is accurate. He did show up with the man bun when he debuted, I do believe, but he does have his chest hair in there, which is always nice to see. I love seeing the chest hair on the figure. That's a good, that's a very underrated detail, man. You can really, I don't know, the execution of that kind of detail brings the figure to life, kind of. Kind of like when we used to not get chest hair on Seth Rollins. When they added that chest hair, it just, it's like, wow, that actually adds to the figure a whole lot, so I like when they add the chest hair in there, but I like the torso in there, standard arms, nothing crazy there. We do have his short pants, or his tucked in pants right here, the jeans, and the color is a little bit lighter than it actually was. I do believe it was kind of a dark denim, but, and originally when they showed this figure off, I actually held this figure in my hands at San Diego Comic-Con, and I want to say it had dark denim. And if I can find that footage, I'll plug that in there because I, I put it in my Comic-Con vlog that I never really even released. But I do have the footage somewhere, and I'll try to plug that in there. But yeah, the, the denim does look really good when you have all these dry brush details. I just wish that the, the jacket came with this or the vest came with this because it really adds to the figure a whole lot, the wrinkles and everything. And I do believe this is the same sculpt we saw on the Build-A-Figure British Bulldog, but all the wrinkles and everything look really, really good. They did a great job there because the dry brushing brings out those details, I think. So they are pinless, though, and they're tight as heck, man. Oh my god in heaven, I can't stand that. And he's got his short boots in there, but yeah, man, this is what I really don't like about modern WWE figures, man. He's on ball joints, he can kick forward okay, I don't really care about the kick forward. It's the bend in the knee, man. The bend in the knee is so tight on every pinless figure, and it drives me nuts. It feels like the figure is going to snap in half at any moment, and if you compare that, look at this. I left that unedited right there. I wanted to have that full articulation in there so you guys can see that. If you compare that to the Hulk Hogan here, look at that bend of the knee and then compare it to this bend of the knee. Look how genuinely smooth. It's not loose, but it's not ultra tight. I can smoothly, smoothly pose my guy here. But this right here, man, this is like, I feel like the boot's going to snap off. I feel like the leg's going to snap off. It's just, I don't like it, man. I don't like pinless joints. I don't like pinless joints on the legs. Arms are fine. Arms feel buttery smooth. I really, I don't have any issues right here. It's all in the lower legs. And on top of that, customization is, uh, with modern figures, is kind of non-existent because you can't really do anything without the peg in there. You can't, like, switch them out and whatnot. I don't know. Something that I definitely wanted to get into, but I'll show you guys on the Austin figure, which we'll get into another example. But let's get into some Scott Hall figure comparisons. So for your Scott Hall figure comparisons, here is the Legends Target exclusive Scott Hall over here, which I really like. I like this head sculpt a lot with the bandana. Then we have the Monday Night War Elite here, and then we have the WrestleMania 18 version right here, which, you know, these both of these head sculpts aren't the greatest. I think I like this one better than that one, and I like the toothpick in there, but because I'm pretty sure he had a toothpick when he did when he debuted. May have to use the Flashback Walmart exclusive head sculpt. I, I have plenty of Scott Halls. Jesus Christ, you see that Spider-Man reflex right there? I'm pretty sure I do have Scott Hall extra head sculpts, which we'll have to see, and then try to play around on surgery because I definitely want to fix these figures up. They're definitely going to be on surgery. We'll see what we can do to all of them. Make them more accurate, things like that. But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this. So yeah, man, for Undertaker's accessories, they give you a whole plethora, man. Look at all this that you get. So he does come with the same glove mold that Hulk Hogan comes with, except they did paint skin tone on the tips of the fingers, which I think is fine. I, I don't know the exact gloves that he was wearing at this specific time, you know, just right off the cuff. However, he has the same baggy gloves on there. But outside of that, he comes with the same gloves as Hogan, except they do have the skin tone in there, which is a good deal detail that they actually got the skin tone paint down in there in the crack of the hand like that. That's actually pretty impressive, I think. So that is good to know. However, this is all that Undertaker comes with, man. How bare bones. I guess it's because everybody else is stacked, but I don't know. De definitely, you know, not, not a lot to write home about. All right, man, getting into Undertaker, starting off the head sculpt. This head sculpt is truly grown on me. I think that it looks a lot better 
under the camera right here than it did when I was just looking at it in the packaging, looking at images. I think it looks a whole lot better in person, but I don't necessarily like love it, but I think it's pretty solid. I, I, I like it. I do like it. I think it does have a strong resemblance right here. Again, at first, I wasn't really feeling it, but now that I've taken a closer look at it, I, I quite enjoy it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good right there, man. I, I like that a lot. Now, one thing that I don't like is the torso right here. Now, I can't tell. I think this is a redo torso of the Network Spotlight Undertaker from years ago, if I'm not mistaken. But they did put the bigger shoulders and arms in there. And when they put the bigger shoulders and arms in there, it kind of made it where he just looks like his proportions are very weird. And I like the bigger arms for Undertaker and everything like that. I just feel like his torso is a bit weird. Like, if we move this back, I, I don't know. You guys will see it. I'll showcase it here in a minute. But there's the crotch and everything like that. He has a tight waist and everything. The gloves look pretty decent on there, I'd say. This is the Ultimate Edition crotch, legs, and boots that are on here. So they did put the Network Spotlight torso onto the Ultimate Edition Undertaker crotch, legs, and boots. And they're pinless, but they're kind of buttery smooth compared to the Ultimate Edition. I felt like these feel better than they originally did. The boots get a little bit loose and the boots swivel, but he does have these little X's on here sculpted on, which is really nice. Very cool boots, and they are the, you know, kick pad style or the, you know, strapless style, which look really good. He's got the even toe articulation in there, even though it is an Elite compared to an Ultimate. But look at this right here. Is he not? I guess it's not that big of a deal when I'm looking at it. Like, sometimes when I reveal these figures or, like, I'm looking at them in hand and I look at them on the camera, like, when you're looking at it in hand, he looks like his body's way too skinny for the rest of his, for the rest of him. But when I look at it on camera, he actually looks fine. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping ball sack. I don't know what's going on there. But I don't know, man. I like it. I like the figure. It's just, there's certain things about it that kind of bother me. Again, the, the pinless joints in the legs really bother me compar comparatively because they get so tight. But these aren't as tight. But the boot swivel, you guys can see the boot swivel's a little bit loose on this guy. I don't know. Like, he can kick forward good. He's got a double joint knee. Like, all the articulation set. The, the arms move buttery smooth. He does have those large elbow pads in there, so it's going to hinder the arms a little bit. But, I don't know. This figure this figure is much better than I was anticipating when I got him out of the packaging. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm being proved wrong here after my initial thought. But for your Undertaker figure comparisons... So, for your Undertaker figure comparisons, man, here is the Monday Night War Elite in the middle. You have the Ultimate Edition or the Ultimate Edition Series 20 re-release. It's basically the exact same there. Defining Moments Undertaker over here. You have the Legends Target Exclusive Legends Series. Is it 20 or 19? I can't remember right here. Then we have the Network Spotlight Toys R Us Exclusive Undertaker over here, which again has the exact same torso. This is the same torso as over here. So you get a little bit of reuse combined together with a new head sculpt and it makes a new Undertaker, but all of these figures look very similar. It's kind of crazy just because, you know, it's hard to hide the details because it's all black and whatnot, but I love the new arm size they have here. If Like, out of these three, I like the Legends the most. I love the Legends Undertaker a lot, but this Monday Night Wars Elite is pretty good. I do like it. I like the head sculpt. I know a lot of people are going to want to do that, and I've seen a lot of people pop the this head sculpt over here because this head sculpt looks way better than this one that looks like Michael Jackson. So I will do that right now so you guys can see if you guys want to take your Ultimate Edition Taker right here. If you want to take your Ultimate Edition Taker here and pop this head sculpt on there... I will do this for your viewing pleasure right there. And that does look, oh my God in heaven, that looks very good. That is crazy, man, because the torso, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. The torso on this Monday Night War Elite makes him look so skinny, but looks at, look how much more broad and menacing the Ultimate Edition looks now with this head sculpt on there. That is, oh yeah, dude, I got to track down another one of these. This is awesome because I want the normal Elite, but I do want the Ultimate. I never liked this head sculpt on the Ultimate Edition. I'm going to put this head sculpt over there because that looks so damn good, dude. That looks incredible. I love that. Great, great work right there, man. That's epic. Hands down, that's money. And last but not least, we do have Stone Cold Steve Austin's accessories here, and he gets quite a slew of stuff as well, like Hollywood, Hulk Hogan, and Scott Hall. You get quite a bit here, and I genuinely don't know what my favorite accessory is. Having the Austin 316 shirt, you know, I know you're going to say, well, we've gotten that shirt 600 times, but not with the damn accurate Smoking Skull graphic on the back. Now, I will also say, I think the graphic is a little bit too low. I will say that here, man. You're probably like, oh my god, this moron is really nitpicking the shirt. Yes, I am. I am nitpicking the shirt a little bit here, because look, Look, this is a perfect pretty much location of, of, of the logo here on the front for the most part. It may could be shrunk just a hair, but flipping it to the back, the smoking skull is quite low, man. Like, look at that right there. That's pretty low. It needs to be up. It needs to be, like, center, like, upper back right there. But at the end of the day, at least we have the shirt with the graphic on the back. I will say that. I am glad to have the graphic on the back right there as a massive Stone Cold guy and just, you know, grow
growing up, I was always annoyed with the Jax figures. I've said this quite a bit. Growing up, when the Jax figures, you'd get a Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it would have nothing on the back. And that was my favorite part, man. My favorite part of his of his merch and his gears and his vests and all this stuff is the skull on the back. So that always used to bother me, but the logo looks brilliant. I just think it's a little bit too low. That's just something that I wanted to point out there. But the graphic's great. There's no Velcro. It's great. It's similar to his Ultimate Edition, so that's great to see. I'm definitely going to get usage out of this in my collection. But we also have his camo jacket here. Now, this is the same camo jacket for the most part. It's not identical to the Defining Moments, I don't think. I think the Defining Moments of, of yesterday had, like, black cuffs or something. It had a little bit different graphics going on, but this is a really cool camo jacket. Definitely going to be putting this on the figure and, you know, getting a lot of usage out of this. I think the St the Monday Night War Stone Cold Steve Austin Elite is going to be a, you know, every time I see it, purchase it, and I hope that I have multiple opportunities, but being such a big Austin guy and getting another Austin in jeans with the added bells and whistles and all these accessories that you can use for other Austin fix-ups, it's absolute uh, must-grab every single time. But the pattern on here is not the most accurate, but it's not the biggest deal ever. You know, I, I don't have a huge problem with it, but it is a cool, you know, quote-unquote camo jacket that I think is awesome. And again, it is replicating the defining moments. So that figure was so sought after and cool. So this is awesome, and I love this a lot. Now, we also have the Stone Cold 316. You got the camo hat in here, which is really cool. It's got a tan color with some added camo. Why the hell did the damn autofocus just go awry right there? But pretty cool looking. I like this a lot, you know? It's like a darkish, gr very dark green almost. It's not black. It looks black, but I think it's very dark green. But you have the Stone Cold graphic in there. We've seen this before, and I think the colors are changed slightly from yesteryear, like we talked about. But yeah, pretty good stuff. I like this. Fits the figure well. And also, for the first time in the Mattel line, he finally comes with a can of beer soda, and it's very nice to see here. It doesn't have any graphics on it. I kind of wish they went the Jax route and put soda or, you know, just something on there. Or why couldn't you put, I guess you couldn't imply something, but could you put, I don't know, like a Stone Cold graphic or a skull or something and kind of make it look similar to a Steve Weiser or, you know, make it look similar to the Broken Skull stuff that he has and stuff like that. I feel like you could have replicated it and not done exactly. Like a plain aluminum can here isn't bad, but even just painting the middle red or painting the middle blue would have added some detail. I might do that or something just to add something to it. Because I think like the plain, like no can of soda really looks like this. There's no like blank can. This looks like a, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know really, you know, like bomb shelter can of soda kind of. So I'd like to see some sort of graphics on here, but I still like it. I'm glad that they included it and it's always nice to have a can of soda. So I could customize this into a diet dude. Need to do that actually. Yeah, I, you know what? Need to diet do that. And last but not least, he does come with choke slamming style hands to hold the can. So he does come with these so that he can hold the can easier, which makes a lot of sense. So no mic holding hands, but you I guess you could probably use this as mic holding hands But yeah, they're meant to hold the can and you know Stone Cold Steve Austin if he has fists He's beating the hell out of you stomping mud holes in you so we do have fisted hands here No middle finger hands just yet. Maybe one day man. Maybe one day I've been getting into the Stone Cold Steve Austin which coming in was probably my favorite figure in the set We have the screaming expression from the ultimate edition now One thing I always talk about with Stone Cold Steve Austin is you have to nail the head shape Austin has a very specific head shape and if you don't make his head tall enough and it gets wide, it won't look anything like him. And I'll showcase some examples of what I'm talking about. And you may think I'm insane, but I'm. it's true, man. The Ultimate Edition head sculpts did a great job of capturing the head shape. At least these versions, this screaming expression and then the smiling versions are the best Austin head sculpts we've ever seen. These look very damn good. They look amazing. So I'm glad that they used this here. Just uncanny likeness. They did a great job on these. But outside of that, we do have the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso, which I like. I really wish that they would give him new shoulders, new arms, new legs on his elites and ultimates because he's too skinny, man. He's too small. I think that they could easily use bigger arms on this. Now, we saw it on his Ruthless Aggression Elite. They did use bigger arms, but I want to see an Austin in trunks that has an updated formula. He needs a brand new formula. I think it would do wonders for him there, but there is Austin's torso. He's got the arms in there, and then he does have the light jeans. Now, the light jeans look really good. Now, one thing that I will also say is I really wish we'd get a new jean mold. Like, Stone Cold Steve Austin, his jeans were not baggy like this, really. They they weren't skinny, but they weren't baggy. They had, like, sort of a tighter cuff, which is kind of a nitpick, but it's true. And I'm just saying, like, I don't mind this. It's not annoying like some other things that we've seen. But I would like to see them get away from this baggy mold. Now, I know they just switched these pants. Like, there's plenty of people that wear jeans, like, regular jeans like this. Like, Eric Bischoff. This works good for Eric Bischoff in jeans, I think. You know, guys like that. But 
I think that they could use a new Austin skinny jean mold, especially for anything in the 90s, man. The jeans weren't skinny, but they weren't super baggy like this, depending on who it was. They kind of had like a tighter cuff, man. And I think that a tighter cuff would do wonders for this figure in terms of likeness, but you guys will notice they are pinless. I do believe, and on the Lex Luger Builder figure, they are pinless. And that kind of hinders the figure, man. So with Austin right here, I mean, like the ab crunch, all this is all good. You don't have any issues here. All this moves buttery smooth. The kick forward's good. Like he's on ball joints, so I don't really have any issues with that. But this right here, look at that right there, man. That is so tough to bend that knee. And look at that. It made the damn thigh swivel so loose, man. God, that is just egregious. It's egregiously tight, man. It's egregiously tight. It's just absurd. There's no reason for all that, man. Good God in heaven. It's very upsetting. It's way too tight. And you compare that to pretty much the exact same Austin, right? This is the Attitude Era Elite here, which has the wrong head shape that I'm talking about. Look at this right here. See how this head shape is wider and this head shape is more narrow? This is more accurate, but that, I digress. That's not what I'm talking about at this exact moment. Look at this knee right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look how easy that is. Look how great that is. I can bend the knee and it doesn't feel like it's going to snap. And then you get over here and it's just... Ugh, can't even like... Ugh, look, it's going to snap at any moment. So yeah, that's what I don't like about pinless legs. But yeah, let's get into some awesome figure comparisons. I'm going to dress this guy back up. All right, man, for your Stone Cold Steve Austin figure comparisons, here we have the new Monday Night Wars Elite in the middle. Now, one thing that makes this figure significantly better, and this is another thing that I'd like to get into, is I don't know how they can do it. I guess this is really the only way, is you have to kind of adjust the shirt yourself. But you see how I've made it look tucked in? Austin always had his shirt tucked in pretty much for the most part. Now, especially around this time frame, his shirt was always tucked in and showing off the belt buckle. And look how much better it makes the figure look. I just think that it looks so much better in my opinion. And I did it on this figure as well, but you can either cut the shirt or you can like just kind of pull it back in the back on display and maybe you could get one of those small binder clips and you could like clip it to the back of the figure and it would add to it. But that's just something, you know, that's kind of a nitpick. It's not the biggest deal ever there. I'm just, you know, I'm. it's just something that really upgrades the figure in my opinion. But you have the Ruthless Aggression Elite over here, which has the same head sculpt as here. It's just repainted. But you have the Attitude Era SCU. Stone Cold Elite, you have the Monday Night Wars Elite, you have a... God, what is this? I think this is another Attitude Era Elite. I just kind of fixed it up a little bit, put a bigger bicep on there, put the necklace, put a different shirt on there, and just kind of just fixed up a Stone Cold and jeans here. And then this is the Then Now Forever Together 4-Pack Austin, which was a huge disappointment. Legs were so damn loose and just, oh man, that figure. I was so looking forward to that figure, man. We just, we, we've missed the mark on a lot of Stone Cold Steve Austin figures, and I made a video detailing the entire thing. You need to go check that out. It's just a very interesting thing. There's so many Austin looks and figures that we lack of him that they could really capitalize on and make a ton of like oh my god it's gonna be so so sought after man like make some ringside exclusives some some defining moments i'm hoping he's in the defining moments line in this upcoming one that we're gonna see in a couple weeks i pitched an idea for one so we'll see if i don't know what the hell goes on there but yeah man i just love austin i love his figures and it looks so good and it's just oh god one of my goats for sure and it's just so fun, man. So, yeah, this is it for your Stone Cold figure comparison. All right, man, it's time to build our Lex Luger after all of the wave here, man. Now, at the end, again, we are going to rank this set, and I definitely want to get into that. But here is what it comes with, man. Hol Hollywood Hulk Hogan comes with the legs of the Lex Luger. Scott Hall comes with the arms, shirt, and interchangeable hands. Undertaker comes with his head sculpt, and Stone Cold Steve Austin comes with his torso. Now, I do believe we are on a trajectory, and I, I know we've talked about this a little bit on the channel before, but th when the day comes that every elite can be entertained, changeable like this it is going to be over with okay when they enter an era where you can just pop a torso together with pants like that right there and that be it and i'm telling you man it's coming i think that is coming when you're going to be able to pop and drop elites and arms and everything together it's going to be absolutely nuts at what we can come up with and the only way that we're going to be able to continue to do things and make new figures, like obviously some people aren't going to care about interchanging parts like that. I think a large majority of people will want to, you know, pop together parts like that. But once we enter into that era, they're going to have to create new torsos all the time and stuff. If I mean, I, I think we're going to enter that era. Hopefully we'll enter that kind of era where you can pop figures together. But if not, like obviously we're going to get multiple gears with certain characters. I think when it comes to Ultimate Editions, I think that'll be a thing where you can put legs with torsos and have two gears similar to the supreme line but they're gonna have to get creative with their unique sculpts and stuff moving forward once we enter that because then you would just have extra parts that you could throw together and make new figures out of so that's just something to think about there but there is that and then we got to pop the arms together have that arm and 
God in heaven, that was crazy. You guys remember the damn British Bulldog epidemic or the, the scandal when one of my shoulders didn't have a piece in there and it ended up, I ended up not being able to build the British Bulldog, but all right, there's that. Dude, after we build this Lex Luger and we have the SummerSlam Elite coming soon, we have quite a bit of Lex Luger figures when you really look at it. Like, we actually have quite a bit. It's kind of crazy, but let's go ahead and build this guy up. I like it, dude. This guy's absolutely shredded to the gills, man. You can make a Vince McMahon out of this, man. You could absolutely make a Vince McMahon. But then we need to take the shirt, put the shirt on there. This is a very nice shirt, too. You could put this on Batista and all kinds of people. He even has the cuffs in there, man. Like, there are actual cuffs on this t-shirt over here. All right, I recommend popping the hand off before you put the white tee on there so it can slide on easier. All right, man, here we go. We got the white shirt on there finally. It's very crazy, man. I can't believe we actually have this in figure form now. I got the Lex Luger, man, showing up right here. Pop the head sculpt on there, and look at that. He's ready to go, man. Shout out to Lex Luger. What a legend. Look at him right there, man. And looking good, man. I mean, for the most part, the figure is not the most immaculate. I do like this head sculpt that they have on here. God in heaven, can we can we brighten it up? The head sculpt is good. I do like the head sculpt going on right there. The shirt looks good on the figure, I think, and the white tee, jack torso. And then after that, I mean, it's basically just black legs. You know, it's not nothing to write home about, but they are pinless. But yeah, it is cool to have this figure in the collection, man. I think this is awesome. So maybe one day we can rank build a figures, but that needs to be a video for sure. But he does come with the interchangeable hands, so you can actually put the the, you know, put the hands on the waist right there. Definitely need to do that. But yeah, I like this figure. You know, not the most exciting figure of all time, but certainly one that I enjoy. You know, I would say that. I mean, as far as as far as figures and as far as this wave is concerned, on like how much sentimental value each one holds, this one would probably be the lowest. I think. However, it's not to say that I don't enjoy this figure and I like having it in the white shirt school and all those different things. So that's definitely something worth noting there. But nonetheless, man, let's rank this set and then I'll give you my final overall thoughts on everything, man. So. Let's get them off screen and we'll go through each one and what I like about them and everything and my ranking for the entire set. So let's get into it. And also, man, just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean that I don't like anything about the figure whatsoever. And just because a figure's number one doesn't mean it's perfect. So also leave your ranking down in the comment section below. All right, man, so coming into the bottom of my ranking, I have the Scott Hall figure, man. Wasn't a big head sculpt fan here. Didn't like the head sculpts that come on here. I don't like that it doesn't have the accurate dry brushing as far as details, I think it's missing some details there. I also think the denim's a little bit lighter than it's supposed to be. And I don't know, I just think the execution of the figure doesn't quite hit for me. So I'm going to go with Scott Hall at the bottom. Next up, I'm going with the Lex Luger. No offense to the Lex Luger here. Just don't have a lot of sentimental value here. I do like it. I like the shirt and everything. But for the most part, it's just a guy in jeans. And the guy in jeans is not one that, you know, is super nostalgic for me or one that really hits close to home for me. Even though I do like Lex Luger, I like that we have this in figure form. I, you know, everything like that, I still would put him next in the lineup. So there is that right there. And also if the figure was just, you know, if it was better, if it was a better figure in general, it could also jump the other figures as well. But let's get into the next figure in my set or my ranking. I'm going with the Hollywood Hulk Hogan figure. I really do like this figure. You know, the weight belt's not accurate. It's not my favorite look of Hogan. I also wish they would have used the skin tone from the three pack for the Hollywood Hogan instead of this, but I do like the head sculpt. I like all the bells and whistles, and it is a unique figure. It's just, it's not as good as the others in the set. I do like it, however, more than the Lex Luger and the Scott Hall. Coming in at number two, I do have the Undertaker. Now, coming in, I thought this figure was going to be much lower in my ranking. I initially didn't really care for the head sculpt. I also thought that the proportions of the figure were a little bit, a little bit off, but actually, at the end of the day, I kind of, I quite like it a bit, so I, it kind of shocked the hell out of me that this actually ended up coming this high into the ranking, man. But he comes in at number two for me. And number one, no shock, it is going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, one of my favorites of all time, obviously. Super, just, it's super nostalgic just seeing this. It reminds me of being a kid. And, like, my dad used to wear things similar to this. Like, right, I grew up in Alabama, man. So he would wear the camo jacket and the jeans. And he wore, you know, like, denim and... He would rock the he'd rock the camo hats and everything, man. And it just I don't know, man. This is I don't know. This figure just takes me back to a, a a great time in my lifetime. So I just feel like I'm five years old or something like this, looking at this figure, and it just I don't know. It brings me a lot of joy. So that it just easily and also the execution of the figure is great. It update. I know it's pretty much the defining moments, but it's such a great re-release. It's an upgrade and a better version. Double jointed arms, better head sculpt, the t-shirt has the bad graphic. I mean, it checks all the boxes for me. So Stone Cold Steve Austin's easily coming in at my number one here for the best figure in Monday Night Wars series number one, man. But as a whole, I think it's a solid wave. I think I do like it better than series number two off cuff, like thinking about it. We'll have to see about that though when series two hits. You know, it has Kevin Nash in it. It's got the Rey Mysterio, the cursed Rey Mysterio figure that we'll get into eventually. 
It's got Triple H in it. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I think this may be the better set. And then Series 3, I think this is better than Series 3. So, you know, hopefully we'll see Series 4 and 5 and going forward. But at the end of the day, I enjoy the Monday Night Wars line, of course. Very nostalgic for me. And I look forward to the rest of the figures that we get in this wave, man. So that is pretty much going to wrap up the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Very long, in-depth review here. Got to knock out the full wave. Uh, if you guys like the long-form reviews like this where we break down each figure, you know, usually when we review a wave like this, sometimes it'll be somewhere around maybe 20 minutes or less, and it would be picking up the figure, bringing it forward, reviewing it, but... I kind of did it exactly how we do our normal reviews, so if you guys enjoy that way, let me know down in the comment section below, man. But huge shout-out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. I appreciate all you fellas, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support, man. You guys are the absolute goats. Thank you guys so much for all that you do for me on a monthly basis. But I'm getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I greatly appreciate it, man. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>